Bonjour, America. <laughs> Bonjour, États-Unis. Bonjour, mes amis. Uh, C'est Marc. Uh, je reste à la café autobus uh, et uh, je répondais avec le questionnaire de TWS et c'est Ali well my first influences in weren't exactly skateboarding my first influences were my my cousins they uh, they were pretty wild a lot of them used to be able to do back springs you know like uh, to tumble yeah. do the back springs like the cheerleaders do my cousin Stephanie used to do do uh, tumbling and and her sister and just playing in the yard was the first influences you know getting physical doing athletic type stuff yeah. those were my first influences okay. it's funny uh, just the traffic you know swerving in between traffic and Paris is really fun yeah I really like that any major city New York Sao Paulo or anywhere skating through traffic is a lot of fun Madrid anywhere that's a real difficult question uh, Eric Costin uh, Rodney Mullen Danny Way uh, I don't know there's so many Colin McKay there's you got so many different skaters that skate different ways Chris Miller you got uh, that's vertical and then you got street you have uh, you have like Laura Thornhill you know Russ Howell Steve Rocco uh, Tommy Guerrero there's just too many <laughs> there's too many to mention those are all old school but I couldn't really say I mean McGill doing the 540 that was like pretty uh, influential I mean not just in vertical but just to do a 540 made people go like, wow, I can go crazy. Or not go crazy, but wow, I can flip or like I can like spin out like or like, you know what I mean? Five most influential skaters. Tony Alva, Shogo Kubo, George Orton, Alan Galfin, Rodney Mullen. There you go. Five most influential skateboarders of all time. <laughs> we got to put a girl in there though too, so Laura Thornhill. <laughs> I think they were the first to publish the sequence of the 540, uh, you know, like frame per frame to show the actual sequence. And uh, I mean, that was that was uh, something that was inspirational. Well, their first issue was insane. I mean, Steve Caballero had just started riding in independent trucks, and then I think the first cover was him doing a indie air. I don't know if it's the square pool or the round pool at Upland, but it's just such a nice photo, and it's like timeless, you know? It's like an iconic image, you know? He's wearing a sweater, like, uh, that looks kind of preppy, and he's a punk rocker, and it's cool. He was doing his band called The Faction at the time. I mean, that kind of stuff, you know, sticks in your head, and you remember it. I like Shogo Kubo. <laughs> I like Shogo Kubo just because he always looked stoned and stuff, you know? And at the time, all my cousins were getting stoned. And uh, being stoned was the thing to do. And, like, he always, like, he had the one photo where he's like that. And he's, like, totally stoned. And when he's skating, he looks, you know, Chinese eyes. <laughs> it's cool. Yeah, he's probably not the most, I don't know, it sounds stupid, but I, I really like Shogo Kubo and maybe, uh, I don't know, George Orton. I like George Orton because he was like so square, the opposite of being stoned, you know what I mean? Super straight, like kind of jockish, went bio. I seen him skate at Paramount, Paramount Skate Park. I seen him skate there live when I was a kid and... Uh, Watching him do airs just blew me away, you know, because it was the first time I seen anybody do an aerial. D mostly like people that I knew influenced me because I saw them firsthand, like my cousins or like my friend Paul or like you know different people that I skated with. You know, they were influences. 
Uh, congratulations, TWS, on 30 years of making magazines. And, uh, okay, this is Mark Gonzalez from France doing a TWS interview. Uh, celebration of skateboarding and publishing and, uh, I don't know. Good night.